Rochester, or Syracuse, or some such town, and as train stopped, I woke up abruptly, thinking I have arrived at some Indian station, Panipat, Gonda, or Kanpur. For a moment, it appeared that they would swarm in, in like houseflies, buzzing names of their meager merchandise. For a moment, it seems they would rush in the classy Amstel compartment to share my American solitude. Beer-backed boy sweeping the littered floor of the train with the makeshift broom of his ragged shirt, the blind beggar with a gnarled arm shouting Kabir songs, his grandson a fragile staff on the dark tale of life, children in circus costumes, mock mustaches, motley caps with piggy tails, sister passing through steel rings, her adolescent bones creaking like bamboo posts of a countryside string cart. Sunker cheeked scrawny widow selling socks and dangles, and later in the night herself. Men carrying deep wicker baskets full of paper, or steel buckets topped with salted peanuts, or boiled drams piled tinged with lemon or red chilies. Robust hill girls in scarlet shawls begging with the authority of a roving priest, the permit of fierce brass goddesses in their vermilion spratal trays or the young women of long black braids throwing faded little cards printed in bad English, pleading attention to rescue them from a recent catastrophe. Eunuchs of lusty nose rings clapping, touching your gorin in a special pack, <laughs> a glint of mischief in their starry eyes. Chai vendors, their throaty cry piercing the silence of the night stations, small stalls on the wheels of hunger, tiny supermarkets on the wavering water courses of life. But no one came as train stopped in utter silence in almost an empty station. No one moved, talked, or smiled, even broke into a helpless cry. Slowly, the train moved on, and I saw juniper trees lined up along the tracks, each branch loaded from fresh snow, mere beggars with multitude hands. Through the glassy panes of an overheated compartment, beyond sprawling vistas of snow and light, I caught a sight of a dozen ravens by the edge of a frozen pond, sitting as if in a corporate meeting, a feel of having at last conquered a war over the mutilated multitude.